when people call for crashes, it, it's such a tricky thing, right? Because crashes are are mainly massive move down downs in a in a single day or maybe in a few days. I'm not necessarily seeing that at this point on on the market, right? So remember that when you're coming off of all time highs and just continual all time highs like we've seen, there's always going to be buyers that are saying, okay, well, you know, last year when it dipped three percent, it was a buy the dip. Here we are down six percent, so it's really got to be a great buying opportunity, and that gives the market a general bid every every so often when it dips. Um, having said that, do I think it's gonna meander down? Yes, I do. Fed came out with ridiculous uh, fiscal you know, stimulus. The government came out with fiscal stimulus and it caused the market to go to in this almost vertical type move. Yeah, so there's definitely, you know, history at least shows us that these these invasions short term do have an impact. So, for instance, you know, all along, you know, last Friday, it was like imminent, right? That's what everyone thought. It was it was Friday afternoon. I called BS on it because, you know, it was just too weird that on a Friday afternoon that news would come out. And I've been saying for the longest time that if Russia is going to invade Ukraine, they're not going to do it during the Olympics. China is very proper in that way, and Russia and China have a very good relationship. So it's more likely it'll happen right at the end or after the Olympics. So we are coming into that you know, post-Olympic period. I think you know, this weekend, the Olympics end. So there is a chance that it does happen. Uh, I'm still struggling with the, the positives for Putin. I mean, there's a lot of new sanctions that can come on, um, potentially pushing pushing Europe away from needing gas. Maybe they'll find other methods. And, and you know, Russia relies on a lot of buying of gas and, and oil from the rest of the world. So so again, I'm not sure if it's a, you know, to me, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Doesn't mean Putin won't do it, right? We know that. But um, yeah, for me, I'm, I'm in a position where if we saw, let's say Mon uh, t Monday, the markets are closed, but Tuesday, if the markets gap down because there was a big invasion, I would be a buyer for a quick bounce. And again, historically, you see panic initially, and then people are like, okay, well, you know, the US is insulated, the consumer in the US is still spending, so it's not the end of the world for the US. And so I will make a list over the weekend of stocks that if they do gap down, I'll be looking to buy at least for a swing trade. Again, I still think overall markets will head lower over the next eight months. So I'm not a long term investor, but for a bounce off of panic like that, absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, on a short term basis, yes. So so I'll just throw this one out here um, like Robinhood. Right. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of Robinhood, but. I can't deny that this is a bull flag, you know, so on a shorter term basis, this pattern is bullish. So you, you might get a pop back to like 15 or 17 bucks on this as long as it doesn't take out this low of around $10. So, you know, there's little shorter term patterns. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. There are other areas where I'm invested where I'm, I plan to hold for, let's say, six or 12 months. And those would be in the names like, you know, the, the outside the United States names. So like China's Alibaba, Baidu. I mean, today the U.S. stock market's getting pounded and, and Baidu's having a great day. You know, it's up on the day about 1%. Not a huge day, but still, you can see while the U.S. markets are declining, you're starting to get this potential cup formation, right? So maybe we start to put in a cup and handle pattern here. Looking at the larger time frame here also, you can see that for, it's all the way down on Baidu from, you know, Baidu was a $350 stock, it's now at $170. So a lot of these names are very good quality, good earnings quality, you know, Bob, Alibaba, for instance, trading at like a 15 forward PE, look at that drop already. So these are the names that I'm looking at. And one of the things I've taken note of is that institutional investors are very underweight global equities, right? All the money from the world has been focused on US names because the Fed was so lenient and always bailing out the money. So all the money came in from all over the world. Well, now the Fed's not so friendly, right? They're starting to say, okay, we got to fight inflation, higher rates, lower balance sheet, et cetera. So you have to start saying, okay, if they're underweight, they at least need to get back to equal weight with global equities. And that alone can push up a lot of these stocks. Now, as I always say, China has risk, right? We know the the potential restrictions and, and stuff. So you have to invest wisely with percentages of your portfolio. But I do think that's the place. I mean, this is the place where I'm, I'm in. Um, I have 
this stock, I have Baidu, I have uh, Tencent, TME, um, you know, different ones like that, with, which I'm absolutely holding for a longer period. And the Fed, as as they tighten, it tends to make people have more confidence in the dollar, right? So even though we have high inflation, the Fed's now saying, okay, well, we're going to tackle this inflation and fight it. And that makes confidence rise, which generally will mean dollars will flow into or money will flow into the U.S. dollar. Um, the other side of it is also the fear side, right? So when you have instability on a global basis, people go to gold and they also go to the old trusty dollar. So that also is, is helpful in terms of getting money into the dollar and propping it up. Now, if you ask me where the dollar is 10 years from now or even five years, I think it's way, way lower. Um, I think that inevitably the Fed will get caught in this scenario of, okay, well, we've tackled inflation, it's come down, but maybe not 2%, but now unemployment is soaring, so now we have to print more money, and then inflation's gonna soar, so they have to attack that, but they never get back to that kind of break-even point. It's always more, 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 um, and therefore, longer term, you have to think the dollar's in trouble. I have bad news for you. If you're not rich by now, you're screwed. And if you're in debt, you're even double screwed. How so, you might wonder. Well, the sad truth is that you're working your whole life to make someone else rich. The mega corporations, the banks, the politicians, everyone is getting richer. They get your money. And what is even worse, they get your time, they get your life. You are not even in a rat race, you're in a financial prison. But what could a solution for you look like? Honestly, I don't know, but I know what a solution for me would look like. It's very simple. I use whatever money I have and I multiply it with 1,000. This could make my life much easier and probably yours as well. If you have $1,000 available and multiply this with 1,000, I believe that this could solve some financial issue for the one or the other. Of course, if you're ugly, you would have to multiply it with much more than 1,000. My name is Marco Stan, and this is what I decided to do. I decided to 1000x my money. This is not a joke. I know what you may be thinking. You know, what, what, what is this guy talking about? You know, how should this work? This is not possible. Well, I made a detailed video where I laid out my plan. And some clever folks might even want to look at this plan and copy it and do exactly what I do. This is just a little hint on the side. You have two options. You leave, you forget what you have seen. You do whatever you're doing and you hope that somehow you get some other results. Good luck with that. Or you click the link below the video. You enter your email address because I'm not showing this to everybody. You at least watch my video on how I plan to 1000x my money. The choice is yours. Make the right choice. Join me. See what a different future you could have. See at least how I intend, how I plan to do the 1000x. So click on the link below, enter your email address, and I see you on the other side. Your Marco Stan.